I just I couldn't see any way of managing without a drink. Having the first drink in the morning just made me feel able to cope. I can't say that I tried to give up drink because I just couldn't. I knew that I couldn't. And at this stage, I think the family were beginning to notice. They were noticing that I was withdrawing from family activities. And if I did come, I didn't stay very long. I could sometimes get a bit angry when I was yeah. at family functions, yeah. uh, disagreeable. Uh, I was not managing and I knew at this point I had to do something about it. And you knew that I had to do something about it. Yeah, I've said for years, quite a long time to be honest, longer than what you, I'd call my mum's brother and say, you know, I need my mum to stop drinking, she's drinking far too much whenever I'd go to the house. I'd always know you'd only ever have um, like wine basically on the go, though I would never see her drink a drink other than something that's alcoholic. Um, even when I was younger, when you was functioning, you know, I thought that was very normal for, uh, you, you know, your, your parents basically drink like a bottle of wine a night and it wasn't until you came into rehab and, my, and I said to my friend, I said, well, I didn't really realise when we was younger and she said, are you mad? She said, no one drinks, you know, your mum, it was very obvious that she was, but I didn't realise until obviously I was a bit older and I did try to get help, but mum, I don't think you really thought you had a problem. To be honest, I hated my life at that time and I think I was taking it out on my loved ones to be quite honest. Yeah. I didn't mean it. Yeah. I just couldn't help myself. Yeah. What I did when I came here, I surrendered everything. I knew that this was gonna be my hope of not yeah drinking ever again, which is what I wanted. Yeah. I was I didn't know what to expect but I wasn't scared of coming here. Yeah. And I, it is the best thing that I've ever done. I owe yeah. my life to this place. Yeah. And one thing that I'd like to add actually, I think that a lot of people, we encouraged you, my mum, to do dry January. So my mum did this and she said, well, I, have, I don't have a problem. I was able to not drink for one month. I think it's great dry January. However, this is one thing that I really think you know, people should be aware of that if you can not drink for one month through dry January, it doesn't mean that you're not an alcoholic because um, I really thought after that, oh mum, you know, maybe you could just drink of a weekend or something like that instead of every day. And you said, oh well, you know, it's fine, I'm, I'm gonna have the odd drink and then it started back up again. Because you made Straight me cross, away. you made me cross by saying that. Yeah. Because I thought you were trying to control me. And yeah. I knew that I got through that month. Yeah. But I knew I couldn't carry on like that. Yeah, but that month also actually made me realise how bad my mum was because I saw the sober mum and then when she started drinking again I was devastated because it all just slipped back down again. In fact it got worse. Yeah, much It worse. actually got worse. And uh, I took my how well was like, just caving in on me. I could tell that everyone was beginning to like recognise my what I know now yeah. is a disease that I've got. Yeah. I didn't think it was a disease until I came here and we're taught, in fact, coming here, I mean, first of all, you have a detox. Coming here and attending therapy sessions with great counsellors, they give you the tools to be able to, um, to not, to, to live a normal life without alcohol. And however, um, I might not have taken it all in at the time, but it's once you leave and you go home, then you remember everything comes back to you, what you've learned here. Yeah. And by using those tools, recovery is possible. Yeah. I'm absolutely living proof yeah. that recovery it's definitely possible. And it's changed my mum, not only in the sense that she doesn't drink anymore, she's a much nicer person. You're more positive. You, Before my mum, you, you would, that sounded rude, you would sort of always have like the worst to say about this or, you know, sort of about people. It would always be negative and I would always think, well, why is she, 
you know, you'd sort of be a bit bitchy, really, yeah. to be quite honest. Um, and I just hated it. I was just, what's, what's my problem? Why is she like that? It's changed you, like, in a better person. Um, and even with my kids, I mean, for me, my mum, she's a really fun nan, a bit crazy, not, you know, <laughs> with the kids. It's good that they've got a fun nan, which they have got. But obviously we started to lose that and she, you know, you just, just wasn't as, you know, excited to see my kids or, you know, things like that. I couldn't handle them. I Whereas couldn't handle now, them because I felt so ill. You couldn't, nobody knew how ill I felt inside. Yeah. Now I've got the energy, energy yeah. to do all the things that I wanted to do. Yeah. I didn't want to be that person. I wanted to be the person that I am now. Yeah. And I am the person that I, I wanted to be. And I, yeah. I, the person that I am now is me. Yeah, yeah, no, of course. It's of like, course. to me, um, I can describe it by, I've been in prison for a long, long time. And now, someone has let me out. That is, that's how it feels. I'm just, I'm very lucky. I'm lucky to have yeah. been able to come to this place. And I'm lucky to be now sober.